Hi there. I decided to create this video because I think this is a topic that doesn't get talked about enough in a constructive way. I think it gets talked about plenty in ways that are not necessarily constructive, especially not ways that lead to healing for the people who've experienced sexual trauma. So I wanted I want to start creating better conversations about this and also hopefully create a way for people to stop carrying the secret because part of the reason why more constructive conversations aren't had is because the vast majority of people who've experienced sexual trauma are carrying is that carrying it at as a secret and so I don't know who's going to watch this video. I don't know who wants to watch a video about sexual trauma, but we need to have conversations. We need to have healthy conversations. And by opening the conversation, it's my hope that maybe you'll find a pathway. If this is you, you'll find a pathway to start talking about it so that you can help yourself heal. And I want to open a doorway for you to talk to me about it because I am here. And if you haven't talked about it with anyone, I'd be happy to be that person for you. My name is Morella DeVoe. I'm a mental health counselor. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, a master uh, NLP practitioner, Reiki master, a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of things to my name that I have been using for 20 years. And over the last decade, I have been increasingly working with people who've experienced sexual trauma because I am passionate about it because I experienced it myself. And so having healed the wounds of that trauma after decades of carrying it secretly, I have become hugely passionate about helping others do the same. And so I'm starting this video to see if I can open up a better conversation with you, with anybody who's interested, especially because... Um, I know there are a lot of people out there, again, it might be you, who aren't finding necessarily the most helpful ways to resolve the wounds that are associated with that trauma. So let's talk about why it's hard to talk about sexual trauma. So I wrote down a list of six main reasons why we don't talk about sexual trauma. The first one is that it's embarrassing. It doesn't matter what age we were, if we were really, really young, or if we were adults, it's embarrassing that this happened to us. And there's a part of us that feels like, oh, I really don't want people to know this about me. Because if they know it, then maybe that's how they're going to think of me every time they see me, that they're going to get a mental picture of what happened to me. And that's how they're going to associate, you know, what they're going to associate with me. So it is embarrassing. And it's hard to talk about. The second reason is that a lot of us feel shame about it. This is a hallmark of sexual trauma that every single victim of sexual trauma who I have met and that and had the honor of working with, every single one of them felt shame about what they had ha about what had happened to them. As if they had done anything, we all feel this shame about it. And especially for those of us, and I count myself in this, if we somehow faulted ourselves or our decisions as a factor that led to the sexual trauma happening. So if it, in any way we feel responsible for it, we should feel ashamed. Sometimes we even feel like it was our fault. And so we carry shame and shame tries to keep things a secret. And secrets weigh heavy on us. Secrets have power over us. So embarrassment and shame. The third one is that we desperately need to feel normal. There's two ways in which this affects us. One is that we may try for decades to act like nothing happened. The proverbial, keep calm and carry on. Nothing happened. It's all good. I can, you know, carry on with my life. And that attempt is part of what buries it deep, deep, deep. The trauma, the 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 effects of it. We we just try to live our lives because of course we're entitled to live our lives, right? And so we try to act normal. I have a client 
who um, talks about this. And this is a core part of what's kept the trauma in place is that she's been acting normal. And that acting of normal is the keeping of the secret, the keeping of the trauma buried. The second way in which our need to have a normal life affects us is that a lot of times we spend many years downplaying what it was. Maybe it wasn't that big a deal. Maybe I'm making it into something bigger than it was. It's so much worse for other people. It can't be that bad. Maybe I'm making it up. And so we try to downplay it. And that keeps us stuck. The next reason why some of us have a hard time talking about the things that happen to us is that our abusers may still be in our lives. For some people, it's a relative, a friend, an acquaintance. And, you know, there's a fear of, I don't want to talk about this because then maybe I'm going to have to do something. And I don't know that I want to go to the police. I don't know that I want to report this. I don't. So the fear of, I don't think I'm ready to do anything about this with regards to this person can keep us from talking about it. And I'll tell you one thing, I am not interested in what people do, what my clients do, of going to the police, reporting it to anyone, unless there's children involved, then we are all obligated to report, right? Because we can stop a child from being harmed. However, when we're adults, the most important thing, and, and obviously for children as well, but the most important thing when I'm working with adults who are healing, who need to heal from sexual trauma, the most important thing is healing. That's what I'm interested in. And once you or anyone who's experienced sexual trauma has had the ability to fully heal those wounds and reclaim their power from that story and not be burdened by a secret anymore, then you can decide, well, what do I do about it? What happens to the other person is not the most important thing. What's most important for me is your healing. Your feeling that the, that experience has no power over you anymore. And then sometimes um, people, especially when, <clears throat> especially when people are, the abuser is still in your life, um, Sometimes what it's going to do to the family, what it's going to do to the people around you can also be a reason why you don't talk about it. Now, the reality is that fifth reason, the fifth reason for not talking about it is that sometimes you don't want to, you're afraid of hurting, hurting your parents because they didn't keep you safe. Hurting the people, or even if you were an adult, you know that the people around, around you, the people who love you might be affected by the truth that this happened to you. So trying to protect their feelings keeps you from talking about it. And that's not helpful. And then the final reason is that we're afraid. We're afraid that if we start talking about it, that the feelings associated with it, the feelings of that experience are going to be so intense that they might overpower us and that it's going to be impossible to come out of that. And that's what trauma does. We're so afraid of what it can do to us emotionally that we try to keep it buried. We act like nothing's happened. We, you know, maybe it didn't matter. I can't even come close to looking at this because it's too scary. The reality, it isn't. We can do it. You can do it. And it's really important to start finding the people with whom you can talk about it because starting to have the conversation will help you start taking the steps to find someone who can help you heal it. And that's why I'm doing this video. So hopefully this video will find its way towards people who are needing to start having, having this conversation, people who need to find a, a path towards healing. And I'm happy to present that to you if you're ready, if you'd like to do that work. I have a group that I run and hopefully it will continue to run. There will always be a new group starting. And so I would love to have you join us if it's right for you. I send you much love. I hope you find the support that you need because we really need to help ourselves heal so that we can um, we can start to change the 
human experience that perpetuates cycles of trauma. And we do that through healing. 